Picture this. Lunch, two colleagues, a man and a woman. When the meal ends, the check comes and is placed unconsciously in front of the man. This doesn't seem like a big deal, and the placement of a check itself really isn't. It's not a moment worthy of a Rosa Parks response. It's a small moment, easily navigated between two colleagues. No malice or injustice is intended by the server. What I'm describing is called unconscious or implicit bias. We all do it. No matter how fair or just we think we might be, we are all humans, and our brains like to take shortcuts. We act on them all the time, and usually it doesn't matter that much because, hey, I'll buy this time, you've got the next one. But what if all the small, unconscious biases added up into something that is unjust and dangerous? In Facebook's employee training, they share a study that shows a 1% bias toward men in the workplace results in an organization being skewed toward 65% male employees at the top level. A 1% bias doesn't seem like much, but it adds up. And it hurts the whole company by ignoring the potential of the female employees. Bias is another way to say, we look at reality through a lens that gives a certain group of people an advantage over another group of people without actually knowing any of the people. We see this in all kinds of areas, like gender and race and social status. For example, studies show that implicit race bias affects things from criminal sentencing to how pediatricians prescribe medicine to their patients. It's a huge problem. Today, we're talking about gender bias. This is really pronounced in the gender realm because men have had physical, educational, and financial advantages over women for the past several million years up until maybe just the past two decades. That Facebook study isn't about a real company, but what do you think the actual bias toward men in the workplace is like? The actual percentage of male employees at the executive leadership level is 85%, as opposed to the 65% simulated in the Facebook study. This means that the actual bias toward men in the workplace is much higher than 1%. It's easy to see the big effects of bias. It's a mountain made of a million tiny moments when we choose to let bias be okay. Being a woman in the IT field where 91% of management positions are held by men, I've been through a long road of biases. Like I mentioned before, our brains like to take shortcuts, even about ourselves. From preschool through high school, I was a driven straight A student with dreams to get a PhD in something. Didn't matter what field, I just wanted to conquer the biggest mountain I could see. Well, when I turned 15, and suddenly every male who had ignored me through middle school was singing a different tune, it was all too easy to rise to those new expectations. I started wearing makeup, I worried about my weight, I spent long hours on the phone, and you know what? I received more peer validation than ever before in my life. Why? It wasn't because I was contributing something new to industry or helping another person advance in life. It was because I fit in. I fit into the societal norms for a 15-year-old female. I changed my behavior to fulfill the expectations I was born into. In college, I interned at a manufacturing company, and I got to go to a leadership meeting at headquarters. And during one of the sessions, the COO was telling us how we had been hired because of our leadership potential. Well, the man sitting next to me turned to me, looked me over, and said, I can tell you the three reasons why you're here. And I said, oh, really? Well, why don't you tell me what those are? And he said, if I did, I'd get fired. End of conversation. That was a moment I'm proud of for confronting bias when I saw it, although I could have done a better job of naming what it actually was. I wish I had said something more direct like, I don't care what you think. I'm going to do a great job here. I've had other times, too, when I've been shamed by my male colleagues, and I wish I had spoken up in my own defense. Like when I was sitting in a room full of male engineers, and we were trying to solve a really complicated engineering problem. Well, the men threw up their hands, folded their arms, sat back in their chairs, and said, we've never done this before. We need to just tell the client we can't do it. And I was so disappointed. 
The whole reason I wanted to become an engineer was to solve problems that had never been solved before. One of the men saw my face and announced to the room, Rachel looks like she's about to cry. And I looked down and I stayed quiet when I should have challenged them. Gender bias becomes really crucial when we're in a position of influence. This would be parents, teachers, big brothers and sisters, bosses, etc. Studies show that children have self-awareness starting at just 18 months old. What kind of biases are we passing on to the next generation without even thinking about it? I was talking with one of my colleagues about gender biases, and he had the realization that without even thinking about it, he had bought his son a red bike and his daughter a pink bike. He thought back to how his dad had bought him a red bike, and it just got passed on without reevaluation or wondering why he was choosing the red bike and the pink bike. It's one of those lazy brain moments where it's easier to go with what we're used to seeing than really rethinking the reason behind the choice. Sometimes the biases add up in a really scary way. There's a picture of a newspaper clip circulating the internet right now titled, When is Rape OK? There are nine conditions listed that high schoolers were asked to consider and decide if those conditions made it OK for a male to force a female into having sex. To me, the actual percentages aren't even interesting because the fact that anyone would give a yes response to any condition ever is gut-wrenching, absolutely evil. <laughs> a yes response to a question like this is the mountain at the end of a long series of biases that were unchallenged and allowed to permeate through our culture. And this starts at home. Anyone ever say, boys will be boys, when a young man displayed aggressive or rude behavior? And anyone ever say, that's not very ladylike, when a young woman displayed the same type of behavior? I want to surprise the world by what I can do, but ultimately, I shouldn't have to surprise them. I should have the freedom and support to help the world in any way I can, whether that's leading a company with a C title or baking muffins for my neighbor. In fact, I should have the freedom to do both on the same day. Now, admittedly, it is really easy for me to talk about how others have offended me, but I have to own up to my own implicit bias, too. I do it all the time, and I don't even realize it, and that's what makes it so dangerous. I was talking with one of my male friends about the new Batman versus Superman movie, and he made the comment that the actor who played Wonder Woman was a pleasant surprise. And my reaction was to snort a little bit and say, yeah, I bet she was, assuming he was only referring to Wonder Woman's physical appearance, when he was actually trying to compliment a less well-known actor on a job well done in a major film. I assumed the worst about him and shoved him into a stereotype. He actually did call me out on it saying, what? No, I mean, she did a really good job. Don't assume I'm only interested in how she looks. I want to challenge us to think about how our biases affect others and ourselves. How the small decisions or lack of decisions contribute to the way the world is in the big picture. Because every small moment we experience has the opportunity to be one less piece of support we contribute to gender biases. I want to live in a world where gender bias isn't just better, it is non-existent. And to get there, we have to be aware of the bias and call it out when it's happening. We teach others what to expect of us. The most important thing is to not let the moment slip by unaddressed because every time we do, we're saying, I am okay with the way things are. It's not enough to just not be part of the problem. If we want to see real change, we have to take action. And sometimes it's really hard to know exactly what to say or to do, but whatever you do, don't do nothing. Let's take responsibility to unlock potential for the next generation and ourselves. We've talked a lot about the negative effects of implicit bias, but bias isn't always negative. Sometimes our expectations for others can be very positive and push them to a level they wouldn't have reached otherwise. 
One of the stories in the popular blog, Humans of New York, asked the young boy in an inner city area, who's influenced you the most in your life? He says, my principal, Ms. Lopez. How has she influenced you? He said, when we get in trouble, she doesn't suspend us. She calls us to her office, and she explains to us how society was built down around us. And she tells us that every time somebody falls out of school, a new jail cell gets built. And one time, she made every student stand up, one at a time, and she told each one of us that we matter. That's the kind of influence I want to have on young people. Actually, all people, because no one has to be with the biases to say about them. Every person has a strength to contribute to the world. And when we honor our differences as an opportunity to make up for each other's weaknesses, suddenly we're living in a community that looks at a person who's different from me, not through the lens of limitation, but the lens of possibilities. The next time we face implicit bias, or we recognize it within ourselves, let's stop and ask, why do you or I think that this is true? And rewrite the story that's led us to believe that bias is truth. Thank you.